Hey there, it's Aaron. In this video, I want to do some work on this awesome image here on our screen. I'm going to expand the canvas and make this a landscape full screen image. And let's see how this character comes to life when we expand the screen for her and give her some place to live. So let's see what we're working with here. We've got 640 by 832. So I think to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and make this 800 by 1200 portrait orientation so that we can give her the height that she needs to give more of a body. I don't necessarily need a full head to toe body shot is not what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna hit M here to bring up my selection tool. And the area that I'm going to select is gonna be quite liberal. I don't think I really want to cut out anything, so to speak, on this side. But I'm going to bring all the way down to here to select. I'm just going to select her in and then at the top over to the edge of this blue light. So that's my selection to use as my reference for the generative fill. So I'm going to invert the selection. And now I'm going to fill up this whole canvas with new pixels that make sense and start to bring this image to life for us. So. I am going to expand the canvas when we have her here, left and right, put her in the center of the shot and see whether or not that's going to work for us. Awesome. Just like that she starts to come alive, I would say. I'm just going to quickly go here and put C so that I can bring up my crop and I'm just going to center her head in the frame there, like so. Awesome. So now let's see what dimensions we have again, I believe I made it 1200. So I'm going to go ahead and make this canvas 2400 pixels wide so that that's going to give us a full screen image here. Nice. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so we're going to fill out all over here and over here. And the instructions that I'm going, well first of all let's make our selection I guess. M, bring up my tool, and then I'm going to select. Really I love what it did with her arms already, so I'm going to bring it all the way over to here just like that. And I'll select the inverse of that. And I'm going to ask it to fill it with, um, I would like to have some burned out cars and tire fire in the background. But I'm hoping that it isn't going to put them in the near, in the near ground. Like I don't want them really to be prominent in the shot at all. I just want something on the left and on the right to kind of fill out the space and make a nice composition. So we'll see what this comes up with and see whether or not we want to take a different approach. So those fire, this isn't too bad, but here this is a mangled mess and overall it looks like clip art. That's really not great. And I also don't really care for that. Let's just run that one more time and see if we can get a better result. Let's zoom in on our figure here. So I would like to get something happening on her arms and maybe something more of a detail on her chest here as well since that's a very, your eye is sort of drawn here. All right, so let's zoom out on this and have a quick look. That looks really, really nice. Natural. Let's put another, try number two. That's pretty cool. And number three, hmm. Well, if number three had something happening over here, then I would be pretty happy with it. Why don't we have another look here at number two? So I'm going to say with number two, but why don't we try to do something like, why don't we add more people? How about we say add shadows of people in the background? Maybe just give it something a little bit to fill up. I'm tempted to ask for a burned out car or something over here, but I don't know if it's going to deliver. I mean, it's not like the AI's feelings will be hurt if I undo it, so maybe we'll just go ahead and try it. Could work, could not work. We'll find out. So that isn't bad at all. That looks great. And what do I prefer? I think this one, because she's coming forward, these people are all really going that way. That's great. So I'm going to take that success actually and just roll with it here. I'll quickly flatten this image so that 
it is definitely going to be working on all of those layers when I go ahead and ask it to generate fill, which is going to be more shadowy people in the background. So with that being done and hopefully filling up the canvas for us here, then we can turn our attention on to our figure. And I do have an idea of how we can change her character overall with just a couple of clicks, so we might do that. That isn't bad. Two, number three. I think number two kind of balances things out. These people are sort of grouped together in a clump, whereas these people are all sort of linear here. So let's stick with that. And I'm going to zoom in here, flatten once again, and let's talk about putting Maybe on the arms here, maybe not tattoos. And in fact, let's highlight this whole area here without giving her too much cleavage or anything like that. I'm not interested in that. I just want to get some scars and tattoos. It's giving it this element to work with here I'm hoping it will incorporate that into a tattoo and I just think it would be nice to have something at least on this arm. So we'll see what this comes up with. I know that it's probably going to add something com completely change this section and that didn't work for me here. Let's try that again. Generate and we'll see if we can get this to take this time. Saying that no pixels were selected but I see plenty of pixels there. So we'll see what, we'll see what we can come up with with this click of the generation. So there we go, no error this time, but not impressed with the results. That isn't bad. This would be the best out of the three of them. I'm really not that thrilled with this spider design. Why don't we, I feel like we're on the right track. So why don't we select down to here and say, just scars because she's got some tattoos happening. That looks more like tattoo than scar anyway. I just want her to look a little battle-worn, match the upper, match her face. So that's not a bad detail. Number two, not bad. Number three, makes sense with the rest of the pendant. Number one, I might just take number one. It fills in that space. It doesn't distract as much. So let's just roll with that. And the thing that I was thinking is that it might change the character, com well it will I think, change the character completely if we remove her ears. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to flatten here and I'm quickly going to zoom in and I'm not going to ask it to remove an ear, but I am going to ask it to go ahead and remove object. And I'll repeat the same process on the other side, depending on what the result is here. I think it's going to be good. Very piercing eyes. Sort of two different colored pupils, which I kind of like. Adds a certain character to her. So there, that did a great job. Got rid of that ear for us. Let's zoom out here. Not bad. Version 2. Better. Version 3. Version 2. I think 2 is more balanced. So we'll do the same thing on this side since that worked out so well for us. And I will generate fill and ask it to remove object. You'll note that I selected the layer that I want to be working from. If I had used that, if I had asked for this fill on that generative fill layer, then it would have given an error because there wouldn't have been any pixels there for it to work with. So here you go, number two or number three. Number three looks great. So let's zoom out. Here is our figure, and I think that she looks fantastic. I almost wish she had more of a mischievous, evil smile. But whether or not you like it with, the, or, with or without the ears, that's a matter of personal preference. But I think that we've done a good job of giving this character an environment. She makes sense there. The composition is decent. And if you enjoyed this video, and you want to encourage me to make more of them, then like and subscribe, and I will see you the next time.